Hi, everyone. I'm Norma Loeb, founder of the Lewy Body Dementia Resource Center. This video series has been created to bring awareness through firsthand experience of people living with Lewy Body Dementia, their caregivers, and through expert physicians. This crucial information will be shared with healthcare professionals, with families, and the general public to heighten awareness and to enable correct diagnosis. Please know we are here to help you every single day on our live helpline. I thank you for watching. I for really, I Maybe a couple of years ago, I would have a problem tripping every once in a while. I was always into sports, uh, so I may run into a slight problem, but I never really, you know, I, I never really thought they were connected, uh, the disease with this kind of feeling. And it's gotten worse. Uh, I find that I, I have a very bad problem with heights, and that has become much worse. Uh, I don't know if there's any kind of relationship between the two. Uh, but I'm finding that I fall easily now. I, I trip over things. I went to the Met game the other night and we were sitting like near the top and I couldn't look down. I felt my, my legs were actually wobbling. And so I immediately left the stadium. I, 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 that was the first time that I felt like I was losing control. She'd be sitting back and she couldn't get up. So she'd always be kind of like leaning back. And, you know, when she tried to get up, she just couldn't. It just was like something was holding her back. And she always talked about somebody's pushing me back. So that was, um, that was common. Um, that would happen quite frequently. People with Lewy body often have difficulty with movement. Some people have movement or motor symptoms very, very early on in their disease. And some people have it only much later. And there are many different pieces. So some people have slowness of movement. They can move, their muscles are strong, but the movements are just slow they, or they take more effort. Some people, the muscles are very, very stiff and it doesn't have to be all the time, but it can be some of the time that the muscles are stiff and it's hard to move the arms, it's hard to move the legs. Some people, the movement problems are more with walking so you can have dizziness when you stand up, but even addition, in addition to that or separate from that, you can have balance issues. You can have walking issues. Some people shuffle their feet, meaning when their foot hits the ground, it kind of slides forward as you're trying to walk. And so you're sliding your foot on the ground. Some people have other changes in their walking. They can stoop over a little bit more, have a more of a hunched posture. Um, there are a number of other kinds of changes in walking that we see. Some people start to have more falls or have a higher chance of having a fall than they did before. And then in addition to the slowed moving, decreased moving, stiffness and moving, worsening balance, some people also have extra movements. So tremor is quite common in the Lewy body. There are a number of different types of tremor, often a little shaking of the hand. It could be one hand, it could be both hands. Some people, it's when the hand is resting in your lap. Some people, it's when you pick your hand up and try to bring it to your mouth to drink or eat something or do a button. And some people, it's when you reach out and try to push, say, an elevator button or a light switch. And by themselves, you don't necessarily have to treat these kind of movements if they really affect someone's function. If you can't do the stuff you need to do because of these movements, then we think about treating them. But by themselves, we don't tend to worry about them unless it bothers you. Early on, she's just, she hasn't had a lot of tremor, but a little tremor in her hands, but um, shuffling of her feet was an earlier sign, walking on her toes a little bit. Um, she'll have sort of a stall. She'll get up to start to move and she can't get her feet like quite going. And so being able to help her get started is, is, is what's helpful. Um, but the interesting thing is when she's in times of high anxiety and, and um, her, her difficult times when she's in some delusions, her body, she can get up and move and walk across the room with no problem. So it's really working aids in people that help you. It's a lot 
to explain how right now we have to sit her up, help her stand up, help her get walking. But at night, she might get up and get out of the bed and move. So you have to watch her. I mean, it's that's really a lot of fluctuation in what physically she can do. It's getting harder and harder and going down and down slowly. But um, I think for her, it's difficult because the times when she can go and go take a walk outside and do really well, and then she collapses and sleeps for quite a while and exhausted, um, she's getting frustrated that she feels more trapped in her body. I noticed that um, Mark started to um, drag his feet a little and he never walked like that before. Uh, he also, uh, we, were, we would ski every year and I noticed that he would fall a lot more than he had. Um, and so now he is very stiff and uh, he, he shuffles. Um, doesn't help that he broke his hip, uh, but he, he walks very slowly. And as time progresses, progresses I, know, um, I see that he, it's very difficult for him, for him to walk. He woke up on Thursday and tried to get out of bed and he was lurching from side to side, very unsteady at it, on his feet. So much so that I would take his hands because he really could not walk a straight line and he was weaving so badly from side to side. Um, so what happened, I got him um, a drink of orange juice and I added water. I thought maybe he was dehydrated and, um, and and let him sit a while. It, it kind of disappeared, but um, came back later on in the afternoon. As a matter of fact, even from a standing position, he was almost like leaning so far over he nearly fell. He didn't actually fall, but it was very close to uh, falling in the living room. My daughter happened to be there and she grabbed him. So um, that didn't happen until very recently. It's getting harder for me to walk. I kind of lose my balance and I'm trying to work on that on my own. And uh, if I feel like I'm getting kind of wobbly, I'll just hang on to something and just focus on that. So, you know, that's what I'm doing with that. At the beginning, he didn't have any movement disorders that I was, you know, aware of because he was very active. He was a gardener. He took care of the, the house. He, you know, he, uh, around this time of the year, he would have been out there planting for, you know, his vegetables and stuff like that. Now he's not able to do those things. He doesn't have the motivation, number one. And number two, I don't think he has the strength to do it. And because he started initially with the movement tremors in the, in the hand, but it was not as distinct as it is now. At that time, he was able to eat with no problem and, and hold a cup or hold anything in his hands without shaking. But now, anything that he holds in his hand, it shakes. Sometimes I have to help him to eat. He doesn't, um, he's not proud about that. He, he lets me do it. He actually asked me to help him. So I think he's aware that it's hard for him because it shakes so much with the, you know, to get his hand up to his mouth that, you know, for me to get him to eat, I have to help him. And he, he sometimes he can do it by himself, but other times he has to, be helped. One of the symptoms that we can see with dementia with Lewy body, although we don't have to, is basically Parkinson's-like symptoms. And so that can involve a tremor, uh, balance problems, uh, stooped posture, change in handwriting, change in voice. And so these are all symptoms that we typically attribute to Parkinson's, but they can certainly be seen in dementia with Lewy body. The problem is the way we treat these symptoms in Parkinson's disease is to give them medications that boost dopamine. In dementia with Lewy body, we gotta be very careful with doing that 
because if we boost dopamine too much, it can actually worsen hallucinations. And so it's a fine balance between how bad are the physical symptoms and how bad are the hallucinations to see what is, where do we really focus treatment on? Now, regardless, physical therapy is the most important component to treating the physical symptoms, because no matter what medications we use, it's been shown that physical therapy, with, especially with prolonged physical therapy, can reduce falls, reduce injury, and overall improve mobility. Uh, but my caregiver, I'm so glad I have a caregiver 24-7 in the house. Um, because lately I've fallen and, and some pretty bad falls. I've been blessed. I got bruises out of them and that's all I've gotten. Uh, the one time I was exceptionally really glad she was there, I fell through our glass doors in the shower. Pushed the doors against the wall. Thank God they didn't break. I didn't get cut. But my wife was here to help pick me up and get me out of there because I don't believe as a person with Louie, as weak as I've gotten, I could have gotten myself out of there. I mean, the other night, my legs get so weak, uh, we had a travel wheelchair. And I was standing at the sink for a while and I could not move my legs. It just, it gave out. She had to bring the chair in and put me in the wheelchair to wheel me back to the living area. And that's a new symptom that's happened uh, quite frequently.